Hello and welcome back to the brewery once again. Today it's cold, windy and rainy outside, so it's time to do something a bit different. You probably might have heard me talk in a previous video about how my brewery control box, which you've probably seen in the background several times, seemed to have a sticky relay in it. I wanted to do something about it, so today's where I'm going to start doing some work on it. So first things first, let's take the front off. As you can see, it's basically empty. Ah. So this is currently has a Raspberry Pi and a relay control board inside it, uh, along with on the back of here, uh, some very simple wiring for connecting the um, temperature sensors. So got some spare space, and today we're going to be putting in one of these solid state relays, these are basically the same thing I used in the Stirpolate project a while back, so should work fine. And I'm going to switch control of the um, Herms tank here from physical relays here on to one of these solid state relays. So first things first, I'm going to take this down off the wall. It's just simply screwed onto these two batons at the back and then connect one of these SSRs to the back plate. I don't think I'm going to need any additional cooling on them, but I'm going to make it so I've got the option to add that later if I need to. I'm also going to position it away from the screen, so I need to think about where it's going to go. Um, I'm thinking at the moment somewhere under here seems like the right likely place. And then we'll get that all connected up and see how that works. I'll come back with some updates as I go. Hello again, and since I've taken the front of the box, just a quick view of what's inside it. This is possibly the most trivial circuit board in the world. It has a resistor on it, uh, which is the pull-up resistor for the one-wire temperature sensors, which are over here. Those are audio microphone sockets, which are quite nice ways of connecting three wires together. That's the back of touchscreen, which is just a cheap standard dollar raspberry pi touch screen with hdmi cable and usb to connect it back to the pi and those are the wires to connect the sensors back that's all that's in that side and we'll have a quick look in the other side right here's the inside of the other it looks a bit tangled of wires at the moment i might have a little bit of a tidy up uh, some of these are just lying out the way because those are the other end of the connectors to the sensors uh, so at the bottom we have three kettle type sockets, two of which are connected at the moment. That one uh, does the um, Herms tank. That one, is, or the other two, I haven't decided which way around yet. One uh, will do the HLT and the other will do the pump. Uh, I'm unlikely to do set the HLT up on this for some time yet um, because I need to do some more high voltage wiring because that, well, high current wiring because that will require every one of the 10 amps. SSR is now in. Uh, I've wired that up to an earth and uh, GPIO, I think that's 25 at that end. For those of you who don't raspberry pies, uh, and the relay board goes to three there, so I'm jumping around a bit. And those ones on the bottom uh, are the ones that control the, with the temperature sensor coming through so I'm going to wire this all up uh, power it on see if it boots just to make sure none of the magic smoke escapes uh, and then I'll get it back partially together at least I'll get it back up on the wall and the screen on it and we can test it out and I'll then make the alteration of the config in the software uh, so that it picks up the new pin and we'll see where we go from there Okay, so we're all wired up and back on the wall and running a quick test just to see how much uh, the SSR heats up when I'm going to need a heatsink on it or not when running current. But you see the lights on, on the heatsink, the lights on on the Herms tank, and we can't see the fine bubbles. You won't be able to see the fine bubbles rising from the element. Yeah, it's a bit of a knackered element, but it's the inside of the Herms tank for those who haven't seen it before. Uh, so it looks like we're good. I'm going to give this a few minutes just to see if we're getting any heat in the heat sink plate on the back of the SSR when running like this. Obviously I'm going to turn off the current before poking around in the back and seeing how hot it is. Um, and then 
we'll seal the whole thing up, wire it all back up, and do a little bit of software tweaking uh, to make it use the SSR, and then hopefully we'll be back up and running. Excellent. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Quick insert here. Uh, if anyone wants to critique my wiring and give me any better suggestions for making it tidier or safer or generally better, please comment below. I've done a fair amount of work with uh, mains voltage electricity, but I'm definitely not a professional electrician. Um, I used to do science instrumentation wiring, so I sort of know what I'm doing. Uh, but I, advice is always useful. Thanks. And now for the particularly geeky bit, a uh, quick glance at some of the code. This is just the config file, as you can see in this. It's just a simple change in the config, the change of the pin we're using. They're actually uh, direct Raspberry Pi pins rather than wiring Pi ones in this config. The rest is all written in Kotlin because I wanted to learn it when I was writing this. Uh, it builds via a full CI pipeline that you can see here, which is Jenkins on a server on AWS. Uh, there's a build for each of the three core components of this, uh, and they all build to a deb repo, uh, which you can then install on the Raspberry Pi using apps like you normally would. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in a future video.